Imagine a world locked in the grip of eternal winter's edge, where vast tundras stretch under a pale sun, and ancient forests whisper secrets of survival. Picture shadowy figures, stocky and resilient, thrusting wooden spears into the hides of colossal beasts, elephants with straight tusks towering like living mountains. This is the prehistoric realm of the Neanderthals, our enigmatic cousins who danced on the knife edge of ice and fire for hundreds of thousands of years. But did these hardy hunters venture into the frozen heart of the North, beyond the known horizons into lands now called Scandinavia? What if the icy veil of glaciers hid their footsteps, waiting for us to uncover? Buckle up, because we're diving deep into a tale of adaptation, mystery, and the unyielding human spirit, one that might rewrite the story of our own origins. Stay with me. By the end, you'll see how these ancient wanderers hold mirrors to our modern struggles. In the dim twilight of prehistoric Eurasia, around 400,000 years ago, the Neanderthals emerged from the evolutionary shadows. These were no brutish cavemen of myth. They were sophisticated survivors, crafting tools from stone and wood, harnessing fire to bend the wild world to their will. Their domains sprawled across a continent in flux, forests that bloomed and withered with the whims of climate, steppes where herds of megafauna roamed like thunder on the horizon. From the sun-baked hills of the Levant to the misty valleys of Western Europe, they adapted, interbreeding occasionally with wandering groups of early modern humans, leaving traces of their DNA in us today. But the North called to them, a siren song of untamed wilderness, where winters bit like fangs and summers offered fleeting bounty. Consider the Spear of Laringen, thrust into history from northern Germany's ancient soil. Forged from yew wood, sharpened to a lethal point, it lay buried for 120,000 years amid the bones of a straight-tusked elephant, a beast that could weigh as much as 10 tons, its tusks curving like scimitars. This wasn't a chance kill, it was a calculated hunt. Neanderthals, with their robust builds and keen minds, likely ambushed the giant in a marshy trap, coordinating in small bands to fell it with precision strikes. The blood-soaked earth would have echoed with trumpets of agony, followed by the rhythmic scrape of stone knives, butchering flesh for meat, hides for warmth, and bones for tools. This site, one of the northernmost confirmed, sits at about 53 degrees north latitude. No insurmountable barriers lay beyond, no jagged peaks, no raging seas during milder times. Yet, the question lingers. Did they press onward into the boreal realms where pines pierce the sky and auroras dance like spirits? To unravel this, we must peer into the ecological tapestry of prehistoric times. Neanderthals weren't bound by static borders. Their world pulsed with change. Glacial epochs advanced and retreated like breathing giants, reshaping landscapes. During warmer interglacials, forests expanded, rivers swelled, and animal migrations opened new paths. Traditional reconstructions of their range, blobs on maps dotted with fossil finds, fall short. They're snapshots of an incomplete puzzle, ignoring vast swaths where bones dissolved in acidic soils or were pulverized under ice. For instance, a single child's skeleton in Uzbekistan's Teshik Tash cave anchors an eastern blob, while Denisova Cave in Siberia hints at far-flung adventures. But gaps yawn wide. Central Asia's steppes, Bosnia's karst plateaus, places teeming with game yet void of remains due to erosion or undiscovered secrets. Here's where fresh analysis shines. By modeling their ecological niche, we can predict where they might have thrived beyond mere bones. Neanderthals favored temperate zones, Annual temperatures averaging 9 to 10 degrees Celsius, precipitation between 250 and 1500 millimeters yearly. Think of environments akin to today's Balkans. Sarajevo's crisp winters and lush summers, far from equatorial heat but not the barren Arctic. They evolved in Eurasia's cooler climes, making them cold-adapted relative to African ancestors. Yet they gravitated toward milder phases. My take? 
This preference underscores their ingenuity. They weren't icebound nomads, but opportunistic foragers, exploiting woodland edges where deer, horses, and bison congregated. In harsh spells, they endured bottlenecks, population crashes from starvation or isolation, but rebounded, adapting tools and tactics. Around 145,000 to 30,000 years ago, climate data reveals a dynamic stage. During marine isotope stage 5E, the Eemian interglacial peaking at 120,000 years ago, warmer conditions melted ice caps, pushing suitable habitats northward to central Sweden. Forests of birch and pine carpeted the land, rivers teemed with fish, and megafauna grazed open glades. Sea levels rose dramatically, flooding lowlands and creating watery barriers. Scandinavia became a fragmented archipelago, with Jutland Peninsula as a gateway. Yet Neanderthals were no strangers to water. Artifacts on Crete suggest short sea voyages, perhaps on rudimentary rafts lashed from logs. Imagine bands paddling across narrow straits, spears at the ready, drawn by seals barking on distant shores. But nuance abounds. High seas might have deterred sustained settlement. A sweeter window opened slightly later, around 100,000 years ago, at the Eemian's twilight into the Weixlian glacial. Cooling tide water back into ice, dropping seas and exposing land bridges. Sweden fused to Denmark via verdant corridors, birch groves yielding to pine stands alive with reindeer and aurochs. This era screams opportunity, low population densities, perhaps only 5,000 to 70,000 Neanderthals total meant no overcrowding push, but curiosity or game trails could lure them north. In my view, this mirrors modern wildlife migrations. Think caribou herds following greening tundra. Neanderthals, with their social bonds and shared knowledge, might have followed suit, establishing seasonal camps where flint napping echoed under midnight suns. Challenges loomed large in these northern frontiers. Glaciers, slow-moving behemoths carved U-shaped valleys and dumped sediments, erasing traces. Southern Europe boasted caves, natural shelters preserving hearths and art. But the north offered open plains, winds howling like wolves. Neanderthals improvised. Post holes at French sites hint at wooden frames draped with hides, windbreaks against blizzards. Hide scrapers from northern German digs suggest tailored clothing, furs sewn with bone needles, perhaps layered for insulation. Living exposed demanded vigilance. Fires crackled constantly, not just for warmth, but to signal kin across vast steps. Hunting defined their story. At Newmark Nord, a lakeside haven 125,000 years ago, Neanderthals targeted adult male elephants, isolated bulls easier to isolate from herds. Cut marks on 57 skeletons reveal systematic butchery. Meat stripped, marrow extracted, hides cured. The site spanned 2,000 years, a hub amid pine oak woods. Curiously, pollen shows open landscapes amid expected forests, spiked with charcoal fragments. Were Neanderthals torching underbrush to create grazing clearings? Luring prey, this landscape engineering, if deliberate, reveals profound foresight, manipulating ecosystems like early farmers. I ponder, it echoes how modern indigenous groups like the Australian Aboriginals use controlled burns to manage bushlands, boosting biodiversity and hunts. Neanderthals, too, were stewards, not mere exploiters. Doggerland adds intrigue, a sunken realm connecting Britain to the continent, submerged 8,500 years ago. A Neanderthal brow fragment, dredged from North Sea depths, dates to 50 to 70,000 years ago, hinting at inhabitants feasting on marine bounty. This low-lying plain, rich in rivers and herds, could have funneled northern treks. Yet, accessing it demands underwater archaeology, divers probing silty beds for tools or DNA. Sedimentary ancient DNA, set of DNA, revolutionizes this. Tiny genetic scraps from bone flakes or feces persist in mud, detectable without full skeletons. Picture coring a Danish bog, 
extracting layers where Neanderthal markers glow, proof of presence sans artifacts. As millennia waned, pressures mounted. Knee space shrank with cooling climates, ice encroaching like a closing fist. Neanderthals clung on through oscillations, but around 40,000 years ago, their trail fades. Why? Climate alone doesn't explain resilience in prior dips. Enter Homo sapiens, our ancestors arriving with advanced tech. Atlatls for distance throws, finer blades, perhaps dogs as allies. Competition for resources intensified, interbreeding occurred, but Neanderthal numbers dwindled. It's a poignant one-two punch, environmental squeeze plus invasive rivals. In reflection, this parallels ecological invasions today. Think invasive species outcompeting natives amid habitat loss. Neanderthal's legacy? Bits of their genome bolster our immunity, skin tones adapted to low light. To vividize this prehistoric saga, let's weave in real-life echoes. Consider the 1996 discovery at Boxgrove, England, 500,000-year-old horse bones with Neanderthal-like cut marks, unearthed during quarry work. Workers stumbled on a butchery site, revealing how early humans scavenged or hunted in foggy marshes. Or the 2018 find in Poland's Kiemna Cave, Neanderthal hand axes amid bare remains, suggesting shared dens in frigid winters. These stories humanize the past, ordinary folk unearthing extraordinary clues. Fast forward, Inuit hunters today navigate Arctic seas with kayaks, echoing Neanderthal adaptations. Their sealskin anoraks mirror in furred fur drapes, blending tradition with survival. Ultimately, this tale of Northern Quest teaches a timeless lesson. Adaptability is humanity's greatest strength. Yet fragility lurks in change. Neanderthals push boundaries, shaping worlds with fire and spear, but vanished when pressures converged. In our era of climate shifts and migrations, we must heed their echo, innovate, collaborate, and respect the delicate web of life, lest we follow forgotten paths into oblivion. <laughs>